What's up guys? We're out here in the shop tonight. Um, I'm with my dad. We're gonna go ahead and put together this short block. What are you doing over there? I'm trying to make you laugh. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take this lint-free cloth and some mineral spirits and clean up all the cylinder walls, clean up all the main bearings. Just go over everything, blow everything out. Um, Bob McVeigh, I call him Uncle Bob. Uh, McVeigh Automotive and Machine up in Mount Vernon does all our machine work for us. He's very, very good at making sure everything's nice and clean when it leaves the shop. However, this thing has sat here for weeks in the uh, shipping and receiving area. And uh, even though it's been covered, there's still a little bit of dust and some dirt that gets in everything. So we're just going to go over everything with this lint free cloth blow everything out, go everything, go over everything real close and make sure everything's nice and clean before we start uh, assembling the short block. And the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll get the crankshaft unpackaged. It's sealed in a bag over there on the other side of the shop. And we'll get the crankshaft clean and we'll get the uh, crankshaft laid in the block get the mains torqued down, get the rear main seal put in it, and once we get that done, we can start sliding pistons and the connecting rods in. The piston rings are already on the pistons, and Bob has already checked all of the clearances, uh, rod side clearance, rod bearing clearance, main bearing clearances, uh, the thrust clearance on the crankshaft has all been checked, Piston to wall clearance has been set, rings are filed, so this thing's literally ready to just put together. So we really appreciate Uncle Bob up at McVeigh's for taking good care of us. He always does a fantastic job and anytime I've ever had to go and check anything, it's always spot on, whatever he says. So I think we're in good shape. We just need to get it all put together. So this is a 4340 forged steel crankshaft. It's internally balanced. Uh, it's a 3.875 stroke um, and it fits 400 main journals. Uh, as some of you may know that small block Chevrolets come in two different main journal sizes. There's a 350 main and then you've got your 400 main. So <clears throat> this block has 400 main journal diameter. This crank also has 400 main journal diameters. Um, with a 3875 stroke and the 4155 bore that this block is at now produces 421 cubic inches. So, pretty stout little small block considering that Billy's is only a 406. This one's going to make probably a little bit more power. So, we're using the uh, this is Ultra, or a Permatex Ultra Slick Assembly Lube. We're just putting a little bit of oil on our main caps and our main, or our main bearings here. And then you want to put just a little bit on that rear main seal lip to lubricate it so that it doesn't, uh, so that it doesn't grab a hold of the crankshaft or something when you lay the crank in and turn it. You don't want it to grab. So we've already cleaned all the main bearings with a lint-free cloth. And actually I cleaned them twice. They look good, no trouble there. And as you can see, Bob has already labeled all the main bearing clearances on the block and on the main caps. So that stuff's already been checked out. We're in good shape there. We don't have to worry about that. Tell me if you're ready. Good. 
So it's important uh, when you're putting these together, you want to lubricate uh, the thrust surface on the crankshaft and, the, and the, the main bearing in the back. You don't want to forget that. Um, make sure you've got plenty of lubricant on all the bearings. We've already blown air through all of the main uh, oil galleries, uh, through the main webbing up into the cam bearings. So the crankshaft is clean. It's ready to go in the block. There it is. So the next thing we'll do is we've got our main caps setting here in order and they're set in the direction they need to go. This is the number one main cap, and this is the front. The main caps are directional, that you have to put them all in the right direction. So this is the number one main cap, and this is the front. We've already cleaned these really good. They're ready to go on. So I'm gonna go in and take a dookie, because <laughs> I had chicken noodles tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in and use the restroom, and when I get back, Hopefully Billy and Molly will be here and Tommy will have his good camera charged up and we'll start putting main caps on torquing the mains now. Get away, snot ball. You got the vid? Still not feeling good. Just tired. Achy. Can you look up the torque specifications for these main caps? Because I know there's different ones. I know the main the mains are like 65, the main inside ones. All right, so we've got our number one piston in the ring compressor. We've got a little WD-40 around the outside to lubricate it. And we've got it set right down on top of the, the block. And uh, I think we're ready to start driving number one in. Well, here we go. We're just going to take the blunt end of the hammer, the wood end, just tap it gently. That's it. Number one's in. Let's take a little bit of our assembly oil and we'll go ahead and Put some on that raw journal. Okay. And we can tap that on down focus over here. I'm just going to gently tap that down right there onto the raw journal. Slide the connecting rod over and we're ready for our rod cap. Beast. The radius to edge is going to go over here against the outside of the raw journal. Then start our rod bolts in. All right, go ahead and hand me that little electric impact over there.
we're just going to snug these up with a little impact. And then once we get them all in, once we get them all in, and we'll go back with the torque wrench and check them. As you can see, that one is snugged up with the torque wrench or the impact and slides back and forth very nice. So. Oh, God. I had to set the camera down for about an hour or so. Um, me and Billy put this engine stand on. We put, I believe, this one in the top hole which made this come in contact with the crank and we couldn't spin it 360 degrees. It would have been fine, it just needed more spacers. It just, yeah, so we put more spacers on and moved it to the right hole. It was a pain in the ass and we'll never do that again. I hope not. But now we're back in business. I've used that engine stand my whole life. It's the only engine stand I've ever had. Me and Billy had to pick up on the engine so it was angled right. Our arms are dead. Dad was mad. Dad was mad. Mad, mad. I thought wrenches were going to be flying. I always use WD-40 to lubricate the cylinder walls and the piston rings. I've always had good luck doing it that way. Everybody has their little way of doing things, but... I like to use just use WD-40 to coat the cylinder walls and coat the rings with it. Help lubricate. Here's the driver's side all done. We'll flip it over and do the passenger side. Seven sixteenths. Mm, I think they're. No, I think they're three eighths. If they're three eighths, then they might be only fifty. I think. I don't know, I can't tell yet. So, we've got all our rod and main bolts torqued to spec. Um, tomorrow we'll go ahead and probably put the camshaft in it, degree the cam in, and then we can start cleaning up oil pan um, so we can put the oil pan on it. We need to clean up the timing chain cover and clean up the timing chain and the timing chain gears. Uh, we need to clean up the camshaft tomorrow. It's kind of got some dirty stuff on it. It's been laying there for a while, so We'll work on that stuff tomorrow. What time is it about midnight? It's like, yeah I try not to build engines when I'm tired or exhausted Because that's when I make mistakes is when I'm tired and exhausted. Well shit, so. when you put mine together It was like four in the fucking morning. I didn't ask you anything <laughs> 
<laughs> I was thumping the mob deep that night. When mob deep is thumping, is that, is that why I fucking run so good? Yeah. When mob that, deep thumping. is thumping, progress goes twice as fast. When mob deep thumping, we got a fucking finish line wheelie motor. <laughs> so, I you're very proud of that. It's quite an accomplishment. It's probably the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> So everything feels good. It turns over nice. The rod clearances are all feel really good, which they should. I mean, this engine has already been together once before. Uh, this is the same short block that Tommy had when it was on nitrous. Uh, Except for the block. No, it's the same block. Same block. We bored it. It was standard bore, and we took it 30 over um, to clean it up. Yeah. So the only difference is the pistons. It's got, like I said, it's got those custom-made Wiseco pistons in it now. It's got some massive, massive wrist pins in it. Um, I don't know. I think we're in pretty good shape for tomorrow. Um, you get a good night's rest, and then your mom wants me to get that race car trailer ready. She wants to take the big trailer this weekend in case it's cold. So that's on the agenda for tomorrow. Melvin! Yeah, Melbourne. So uh. tomorrow I'll probably run down to the parts store and get batteries and miscellaneous stuff for the the big race car trailer. And Mom wants to get it cleaned up because it's supposed to be really cold at Marion, and she wants some place to have somewhere to get in out of the wind. And she's wanting to do hot chocolate and cook, and I don't know what else. If she starts making cookies up there, I'll be upset. <laughs> She might have to because if she brings them there on the way, they melt and what? I swear to God, I will not allow her to start making cookies at the track. I have to deal with that stuff at the house enough. I ain't doing that at the track. We're there to race, not make cookies. So, I think that's it for tonight, Tigger.